I'm going to allow Francis to do the honors of unraveling who it is we are talking to this morning. Like seriously, I was actually uh, thinking that you're going to do the honors. I mean, it's <laughs> always ladies to the guys. I'm and not guys doing the, the honors. You are doing the well, honors. Well, um, today we have the privilege of having on set for the first time. Yeah. Um, he's the secretary of the Actors Guild of Nigeria. Vice okay. chairman. Vice Chairman now. Wow. Okay, huh. so he's the Vice Chairman of Actors Guild of Nigeria, Aquabum State Branch. Wow. And for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, join us and make a welcome on set for the first time on Spectrum Television, Mr. Robert Moo. Yes, sir. Hello. So good to have you. <laughs> I'm so, so happy to be here. I mean, Spectrum TV set is fabulous is spectacular thank you it is actually spectrum itself because it's wide it's broad you know yeah the programs <laughs> everything is good here thank you thank you we do appreciate the commendation yeah it means a lot to that's us. the truth thank you so much yeah. how's the journey here yeah it's quite interesting it's quite interesting <laughs> because you know those of us in filmmaking in film industry we like taking adventure yeah so it's adventurous to be here adventurous <laughs> good to know i can see how excited you are i'm happy that spectrum could add color yeah, it's, your weekend. It's, yeah, it's a beautiful color. You know, some <laughs> colors are, may not be beautiful. Yeah. This color is actually beautiful. Yeah, I mean, we have a spectrum of beautiful colors. Yeah, a beautiful light this weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's so good to have you here. Yeah. A, a lot is happening, I'm sorry, um, you know, in the country. Okay. A lot is happening in the Nollywood space. A lot of things are happening that we hope that um, the entertainment industry could help us to to navigate and give the younger generation sure. something to to focus on something to hold on to maybe just rewrite the narrative of what the younger generation is believing so as you are the vice chairman of the actors guild of nigeria here in akwaibo what's what what plans does the guild have in place because i'm sure you are well aware there's a whole lot of things happening now i think with the angle we even start from is the fact that we are having a lot of content that should not be viewed by children and adolescents just flying around on tv you know and then these children are watching these things unattended to is there any plan by the by the actors guild yes the actors guild as uh, as the name imply actors guild of nigeria is a body that has all the actors in nigeria okay and the practice of filmmaking is in the realm of the storytellers, the script writers. So we, the actors, only take out the script, mm. understand the script, then go into interpretation and delivery of the story. So it is at the, um, the, the discretion of the director, the producer, to understand the exact content they need to put up there. And when it gets to a particular channel, is it going to be terrestrial? Is it going to be on cable? Is it going to be on online mm. channel? Then there will be some sort of censorship, which is why we have censors board here in Nigeria to yeah. censor some content that will not affect the children. Now, talking about entertainment being of benefit to the younger and the new generation, hopefully there are so many plans and activities going on, especially because I'm not going to speak for Nigeria, for okay. now, yes, I should yes. be able to stay here and speak for Aquaibon movie industry. Okay. Because I am the vice chairman of Actors Guild of Nigeria, Aquaibon State Chapter. And I don't know, you need to also understand that I'm the chairman of Aquaibon Filmmakers Town Organizing Committee. Okay. What that means is that all the filmmakers from different guilds and associations, they have come together to have a body of town hall whereby they can always come out to talk about the activities, their progress, their challenges for way forward. Mm. And on, the, in, on that time, all you can see that we're going to address all these issues. Okay. You understand? Whereby the storyteller will be able to tell the story that will make them make money and resources. Whereby the producer will be able to produce the content that will be able to help them succeed in life. Whereby a director will be able to direct films that will make them successful in acquiring studio and beyond. Whereby an actor will be able to act movies that are well paid for them to make good living out of it. So, that's okay, so what we are now. 
So basically, right now, our, our topic is um, Aquabo Entertainment Industry, the business, the talents, and the way forward. Beautiful. And, and, and you have captured to, uh, uh, significantly the issues that surround the entertainment industry. Now, uh, we've had the likes of um, our very own actress Inedo come out to say that Aquabo is the next Lagos for over years now. And um, the uh, calling for a need for more investment in the sector. Now, in, in your capacity as the chair, um, the vice chairman of Actors Guild of Nigeria, Kwaibom chapter, and the uh, chairman of the town hall meeting forum that you've just mentioned, uh, would you say that a Kwaibom have enough talent, in, uh, enough creative hands to um, you know compete favorably with other uh, industry players from other clients, like from Lagos and with, uh, within an outside Nigeria? Beautiful. Our choir room has it all. Our choir room has it all. Both the talent from the actors and other film members or crew, and the resources, the locations, the stories. Most of our stories are completely untapped. The talent untapped. The resources in our choir state untapped. So what is happening right now is for us to Unearth these resources, bring all this talent together, discover this talent, bring them into a, a body that will be able to expose them for you to see what we need to see. Aquabum, in, a, in no distant time, will make a global statement. Mm. It has to make a global statement because we, we have it all. Okay? The, if you go to Abuja, go to Lagos, go to even Delta State here. Yeah. Uh, in Enugu Aziz, all these Aziz, most of their content, they have all yeah, tapped all. True. Now, tell us how many movies have gone out from Aquagon State? Very few. Now, there are a lot of tangible things to be done here. Go look at 31 government areas of Aquagon State. They have histories. How many of those histories have been exposed? Been told. In those places, there are many talents. Man is born with talent, endowed. We are just pregnant with talent. All that we need now is the midwife to deliver us of this talent. So who would you say is the midwife that ought to be delivering us of this talent? Because I think yes. that's something that... Yes, yeah. most importantly, we look at investors. That's what you know, the likes of Inedos talked about, investors to come into our carbon state to invest. And government to help create enabling environment. Of course, our carbon state has enjoyed a very laudable peace over the years from the inception or the outset of this present government. So the environment is conducive. Security is OK. So government to continue to sustain the enabling environment and make the resources that are like locations available, like we talk about film village, as the others have to come to play. A very multi kind of dimensional digital studio to be established in our carbon state by the government or even individual investors. Now. I don't know if a question of challenge will come. What will be the challenge? Okay, so um, basically now the issues you've raised, you've talked about the midwife, you've talked about um, the, need, the, the stability of peace, which guarantees investors to come in. But um, tapping uh, from the story we've taken here this morning, the Lagos state government recently gave out um, no interest loans to yeah. entertainers in, in, in the state. And then in Aquaibom state, we've had issues of um, producers glamouring for uh, private investors, yes. for government investment. We've had um, actors complaining of low pay on SAS uh, yeah. or no pay at all. We've had different scenarios, but I want to come from you at this other angle, from this other angle rather. Um, would you say the Aquabum State Government has invested enough into the entertainment industry? Quite interesting uh, a question. Lagos State invested in film making, giving loans, free, just interest-free loan to the filmmakers. It's because they have confidence and trust in those filmmakers. Lagos State filmmakers over the years have built that trust and confidence because of the huge investment they have done individually and the return on investment. We've all seen all those, right? Now, how many of those have you seen from Aquaibon State? Yeah. Which is why we are saying this time, let all come to a town hall. This is why we have Aquaibon Filmmakers Town Hall. For all the filmmakers from all nooks and crannies of Aquaibon State, let's come together and brainstorm. 
when we brainstorm, we strategize on how we can help us, ourselves to be loan um, credit worthy. You understand? We should be loan worthy. We should be trustworthy. We should have that confidence. The governments of the day, the government of Kwaibon should be able to trust the filmmakers in Kwaibon State. Yeah. That will only be when we come to strategize. We come together to mobilize ourselves. We train ourselves. I'll give you an instance. Uh, we need skilled. There are some gadgets that you need to do high subjective film, high definition standard films. Some of those gadgets are not even yet at Kwabon State. So our filmmakers, technical crew, need to be trained in these areas. Things like storytelling, cinematic storytelling, you need to be trained on a good cinema, cinematic storytelling. All the crew you can think of in film industry need to be trained. And now, when they are fully trained, the committee, the Gazzini committee, which I am the chairman, and the publicity secretary, and the secretary, all of us will come together and do a profiling of all these filmmakers based on what they can do after being trained. They will now come up with a business plan with good blueprint and talk to investors. Investors will just come and say, oh, these guys are professionals indeed. Gone are days we can talk about film practitioners. No, we want filmmakers in Aquabo State to be film professionals, not practitioners. Okay. Professionals just pick, come around the streets and shooting, start writing stories. No, we are talking about film professionals. Those good films you see done by the foreign guys in Hollywood and Bollywood are made by film professionals. So by the time our filmmakers here are professionals indeed, it will give the investors the trust. They rely, as in they will rely on us to come here and invest. Knowing okay. full well that we will do better. Okay? So now, we will now have a good business plan proposal to submit to both the investors and to the government to look at one, what will government do for us at this time? Create this enabling secure environment for us. Help us to have a high definition standard digital studio with all encompassing equipment in it. Then from time to time go on hands on training and then we are there. Good storytellers, good equipment, good filmmakers, good actors. Okay, so not to take trained. words from your mouth. Not to take words from your mouth. So far, so good. Apart from um, creating an enabling environment of which I know that the acquired state government has, you know, made possible. Are there other ways that the state government has helped the the um, Actors Guild so far in Aquibon with regards to filmmaking? Are there things, because of recent, we are talking about Lagos State um, providing interest-free loans for entertainers in Lagos. Now, to what extent would you say that the Aquibon State Government has been able to support entertainers in Aquibon? Yes, uh, uh, the few jobs we've done here so far, we have peace. Because one of the problems we have, even in bringing some celebrities, filmmakers to the state, if, in, in, even in any environment, if an environment is not secured, there's a problem there. Okay. So, the government of the day can only invest in business, not in frivolous activities. Now, we need to have business sense in filmmaking here. Okay. I'm so that's, to say, that's yeah, something that's lacking. Like, yeah, we are lacking business consciousness in filmmaking in Aquabo State. Okay. Few persons have come to do film from 10 million to 20 million. But if you go to other climbs, movie, uh, you can use the resources from 150 million Naira to 250, 250 million Naira. So even just the, like, the last movie uh, in Edo just produced and is producing, almost 200 million Naira, the Ashanti production. Now, that has never happened here in Aquabo State. So for someone to invest such amount of money, you should be able to trust what you can offer. You should be able to trust what you can do understand? You should be able to in, in, in trust your wisdom and intelligence in utilizing these resources. Government is watching. The yeah. government of Carbon State is watching. It's actually looking at what we can do as one body in terms of professionalism and in terms of business. When once we get that done, which I am saying now, that the town hall, Aquabon Filmmakers Town Hall will be able to yield to bring forth okay. ability to make us trustworthy business-wise, okay, in filmmaking, so that investors can invest and have their returns, and a government can invest and have that hope that this will be sustained. Because a lot of problems we have, because the government we have today is not that that is just frivolous, because even if you, they will not get the, the interest from what they give to you, there should be sustainability. 
A lot of things you invest, you give money, people money to do things, they can't do again. They produce one, they can't produce the two, the second, the third. So Why? Because they don't have the prerequisite skill, business skill in to that business on. to sustain that business. Okay, so, it means so for that now, government is trying to also assist us at enabling environment okay. and watching us to see how we can come up with a good blueprint, good business plan, good film proposals to present to it. And then at the end of the day, see where government can invest. Uh, okay. See, all that we are saying now is with hope. And by God's grace, we hope and believe that government will definitely invest with what we are doing now because of what is going to happen. Because on by June, in June this year, there will be the first town hall meeting for meeting all, all the filmmakers in Akwa State. Okay. Now, in April, that was third, on 3rd of April this year, all the who is who in filmmaking in Akwa State, they came together. Both the actors, uh, uh, directors, uh, scriptwriters, producers, all the commission. Okay. Came together to say, okay, let's have a Kwabum filmmakers down all where we can streamline things for ourselves, where we can develop a blueprint, a business plan for ourselves, so okay. that it will call for investment, both okay, so from government and individual investors. All right, that, that, that's awesome. I believe, so you're saying that the Aquabum State Actors Guild is actually trying to raise a structure that will make investments possible for Poss the entertainers. Yeah. Okay, just I'll, I'll ask no, it's you. It's not just Actors Guild of Nigeria. Yeah. We have AMP, Association of Movie Producers. We have Actors Guild of Nigeria. We have Cinematographer Society of but Nigeria. But then the and town hall rest, even embodies Nanta, even everybody. Even as you're speaking now, even the theater at, um, and television practitioners, they are also part of this. Understand? But then the town hall en 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 encompasses everybody. Everybody. Okay. Guild, all the guilds, you know, in filmmaking, all the crew you can they mention, all come under the town they hall. have different guilds and associations. They will come under the town hall and have a, a design blueprint for business, okay. for progress. All right, so two questions before we go, because okay. we are out of time. Um, how, what steps are we taking as... I know that you, you're, you're talking of having other guilds under you, so it means that you have the people that are writing scripts and producing. Yes. Are we pertinent and careful about writing script for the younger generation? Because, you know, um, when we were growing up, we had cartoons that we were watching. Yeah. Is there something that the Nollywood industry, as a, an entire body in the nation, and then in a choir boom, is planning to serve the children to watch yeah. because you should, I don't think it should only be movies for adults and you know all the yes. older age. What's what's the plan? I, I, that's very important. Yes, yeah, very very important. Film storytelling for teenagers, for kids, for, for kids, teenagers and youth. Now, like we have it as a problem. In we talk about Nollywood setup as the whole. whole, as a whole, it's a general problem here. We only visualize relationship, relationship family stories that deal with adults. And now we don't take time to structure stories that will bring about morals, educate the kids and the teenagers, wherever they may find themselves. Which is why I am also is always like talking about the town hall. In the town hall, when the scriptwriters will come there, the screenwriters will all be there. There will also be this challenges discussion with them. Say, so these are the challenges yeah. we have in script writing, in storytelling. Can you make stories for kids? that will beat morals, bring good sense of development and growth in them? Can you make story, good stories for teenagers? That is a problem in our society here yeah, that we don't have story for teenagers. Yes, particularly about our own environment, environment. Yes. We don't have peculiar stories that address the kids and teenagers' problems. You understand? Can we start developing this? It is going to be first training of, of their minds, reorientation of their minds for the scriptwriters. Because whatever you see on screen first comes from the storytelling mm. to screenplay. Yeah. Then into directing, shooting, and the rest of it coming to the post-production, it comes out. You don't talk about post-production at this level. What your question addresses now is to address storytelling. So in the town hall, we will see this as a problem okay, so can to be we, addressed. So can we take it that your town hall meeting in June or July, like in you June, say, in, in June, in June should, should we have a hope that as media personalities, we are sending you to the Actors Guild, this discussion should be brought to the table? Yes. Because we are hoping that our industry can begin to write stories that can help our children. Yes. We have stories in our communities that things happening in the villages that should be told and that the, 
the average urban child should be able to relate with what the African story yeah. is. Someone should write those stories. Yes. So we are believe we believe that on having you today. Personally, I even have a script on uh, upside down family. Okay. As on teenagers, kids, what they do, family. I have teenage rush a story. I've even started shooting it. Okay. I have a pilot. Yeah, I wish time permit. One of these days, I'm going to start the trailer of teenage rush and also that family for it to be screened here so that you can see there's effort on my part because i have that orientation that would be now, so most importantly be rest assured in no distant time that, that good story come. for teenagers and we will become soon because we, we are dealing with a lot of here. decadence yes okay. thank you There's very much so that. much in the side is going wrong with kids you know this recent story yes we do with, uh, with all the stuff yes, and all that so yes, we <laughs> can't bring that on we can't bring it on right now <laughs> so much. i know i know i know thank you so much so, so um before we go for ones of time um one last word just a word of advice because um i've been in the industry the entertainment industry for a, a good number of years and i know that one of the problems we have in the quite entertainment industry is um this year Unity, uh, where we have cabal, we have cartel, we have cliques, and um, jobs are not really given based on merit. So, um, what would be your advice to the acquired entertainment industry as regards that? And um, of course, then your advice, a double bullet way to the entertainers in Aquibum as towards you know being part of the the movement that is you know unraveling. Just, Just in about one minute. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, the actual one is that uh, I told you on 3rd of April at uh, yeah, College of Creative Arts, all the stakeholders filmmakers across broad, both crew, actors and crew, understand? Now, they came together on 3rd of April this year to say, no, we need to be one. We need to speak one voice, have one mind. Not only to go to set and meet one, and we don't know each other. That's where conflict okay, comes so in. So that will settle so the conflict. Yeah, the town hall will settle this disunity, the cabal thing. It's going to break even and bring us to work together in love and in unity. Okay. Now. Talking about, um, the second question was about... Um, Advice to the, the talent uh, community. The talent community. Yes, they have to do films that are productive, that are... That, that are, that are, that are sellable. Uh, sellable. Oh, okay. That are credible, that are, no, profitable. I tell you, we don't make it good money here because we do John small, small, small uh, syndrome kind of movie that are not really <laughs> putting good food, uh, good pay, in our account of food on our table. So now, what we are saying now, the Aquabon Filmmakers Town Organizing Committee had consulted with all the guilds and associations of filmmakers in Aquabon State. So they have agreed to move into this train. Like your last question was like, have they agreed? Are we going to make them to flow okay, in this so, train? So they have agreed already, and we have press conference. After that day, we met with the guild elders and secretaries. We now had press conference with the media. Now, what we are going to do is going to be a couple of filmmakers partnership, collaborative partnership with the government, a couple of state filmmakers collaborative partnership with the media. Spectrum TV is involved in what we are going into. All the media we have in Aquabo State and beyond will be involved. Okay. Imagine Spectrum going into film as in film making kind of like. Now that, that this is place will be, you know, that, that is something to that, call you guys in. That is something that we are going to come back to. But at yes. this point in time, we, we're going to call it a wrap on this um, particular interview set in order to call in other guests. Uh, so stay tuned with us on Rise and Shine Saturday. We'll be right back after this break with our next guest on set. Thanks for staying. <laughs>
So guys, the due parenting pod is here. The things people didn't tell us mm. that we found out by ourselves. <laughs> the good, the bad, the scary, the ugly, and the exciting. So it's called due parenting pod. Don't forget that. Yes, ma'am. Hi, baby. <laughs> um this governors have to share police powers with the president as stipulated by the constitution we do not have a federal government police force we have the nigerian police force which shall be administered organized and supervised by the nigerian police no my lord i want to say something huh? i want to say something here perhaps it might also enlarge the scope of people who should be invited here for examination. My lord, if we cannot find those who literally murdered Abiola, who are those people who could be said to be the beneficiaries of the death of Abiola? Rogers has linked you with some of the killings he did. He never did. He linked you with the attempted murder of Ibru. He did not. My lord, the matters council is the leading the evidence in our matters. Is this an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord, but we can be talking about cases which are in court. Is this lord. an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord. These cases are in court, my lord. I'm just reminding you, Lord Sheikh. My lord, my lord, sorry, my lord. I think I'll be in court again. Legally speaking, a program that deals with legal issues and questions we face as citizens of this amazing country, Nigeria. Legally speaking, join us every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. for Legally Speaking. Glad to know you're still there. It's Rise and Shine Saturday edition. And of course, you can connect with us on our different socials on Facebook and on YouTube. Use the handle at spectrumtv.ng. And we are jumping right into the next phase of our discussion. Yes, <laughs> to the very next phase of our discussion. See, there are very serious issues going on in the world. Personally, I am really bothered. What's happening to our children? What's happening to our teenagers? And any time I find anybody I can ask the right questions, I am actually going to ask these questions. And then all the way from a very long way this morning, we had to squeeze in Mrs. Ofonime Basi, who is a certified family life practitioner, parent, and teen coach. She is... Um, I don't know where the word pertinent is coming from this morning, but she's particular about helping you raise your child, your adolescent, and your teen. And for the very first time today, here on set at Spectrum Television, mm -hmm. let's make water. Welcome, Ms. Thank you so Welcome, much. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Well done for the great job you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you. You look so beautiful for the screen, like. <laughs> of the glory. <laughs> oh, really? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Wow. Thank you for taking out the time to come. There's been a lot of issues trending from, from children being excessively involved in, in sexual related issues. We, we have videos trending. And then we are having the, the question is who should we blame? Who should be held accountable for the decadence we are beginning to experience? in family life okay now i'm so happy that um, you're asking me who is to blame but the truth of the matter is that everyone we all share in the blame mm. we all share in the blame now remember everyone out there in the society wherever you find yourself you are a product of the family the family is the production factor of the society and mm. is the most important nation on earth so you 
everybody stems from a family. So when you are now beginning, we are, we are trying to... So in that, uh, having said that, who do you think is to blame? We, are, we all partake oh. in the blame. So sometimes when, when we hear family, maybe parents, coaches, or people that are in the family life space talk about building connection with your children and starting early to do that, it looks as maybe we are overflogging the issue. But I think I went live recently and then I shared an experience. I said, this thing did not start now. It didn't start now. He had started years ago. And I am almost getting to my fourth decade so on earth. So I remember growing up as a child, I had to go through three, three schools, primary schools. And one thing was peculiar about the schools that I went to. You'd go to the toilet to ease yourself, and then you're seeing drawings on the wall. That is when there was there no technology. And mm. people, you know, in your innocent mind, you just go there and see those drawings. You see connection between genital part from here to there. And people sometimes we walked away. But it left an impression in the mind of the child. Mm. So even in school right there, what, what is being thought in the school? So we realize that sometimes we are, talking, we are always trying to put, put conversation like, don't do this, don't do that. But what are the reasons behind what you are asking us to, to do? So we are talking about how bad the society is. OK, so let's, let's just take for, for instance. When, when I grew up, we had television come up at a particular time. And at that particular time, you would have maybe um, something like Tales by Moonlight. Then you now have Tom and Jerry. And then at some point, the news and everything goes up. But right now, the world is changing. The situation is changing. And we, some parents have not upgraded to the level at which the technology is taking us to. Yes. So I'm just telling you, I, I wanted to bring that out, that there were drawings on the walls. There were people, some children drawing things before now. But right now, our children are exposed. In fact, they are born, it's as if they were born to even operate the internet, do a lot of things with the internet. And you expose them to a lot of things. So I'm asking, if you are now saying, oh, who is to blame? At home, are parents doing what we are supposed to do? In the schools, are we doing what we are supposed to do? OK, let's even take it a little bit further to the media. Currently, if someone does anything, maybe that is that you're not exposing body parts, or you're not, um, you're, there's some kind of content that I know that is selling right now. Yeah. Now, if you do not do that, I bet you you may not have about 100 likes. You may not even have people posting <laughs> that. But let, there, let someone come up now and give us some dance steps. We are, we are even encouraging people to partake in certain challenges that we do not understand where they are coming from. So what about the media? What are they projecting towards? And the media is a very, very important tool. In fact, we have the media parenting our kids now. It's, a, it's very vital. You can do all you are doing, but the media is subtle. It's a subtle way of introducing ideas, introducing concepts in the lives of our kids. So you feel in your heart that, oh, it's cartoon they are watching. You mm. think that, oh, it's just one program. But beyond that, what are the concepts that are being passed? So they bypass your children's consciousness, by, you know, bypass our consciousness, and then they now instill these learnings in them. I was watching a program recently with my husband. And I asked, I, when, I, when I watched the program, I, program, I saw, you know, them doing this truth and death before the saga came out. Inside actually. the program. You, you know, so I was like, I, and I used to watch this program with my children before, but recently I realized that this is not friendly. So I heard, I saw that, and I like said, ah, if they are promoting this on family shows, now a child would always, and the truth and death game, the funny game, that always end up in, you know, some intimate things. And you have children that are watching. Some of us, when, when we have guests, what do we do? We send our children somewhere. Oh, just go watch the TV. And it could be a series going on. You don't know what has been in, what is ingrained in that, that little moment because you're not conscious of the, of the parental control. Is this program meant for young people? How many of us even look at programs and say, okay, this is age 16, rated 16, and then we now say, okay, no, you're not 16, leave this place. Or we now see PG that says that the parents should be right there watching that program with them, and we're actually sitting with our kids to watch the program. So a lot of things happen. I also heard another thing recently recently that is somehow trending now, somehow, about open relationships. And I told my husband, I said, mm. some children will look at this and now go ahead and ask, what does it mean to open up a relationship? How do we open relationships? And so, so, so unconsciously, these words are being, you know, they, they are taking it in. While they are playing with their friends, they will ask questions. While they are interacting with people, they would want to find out. And so it keeps happening like that. So if you are not intentional as a parent, you do not have a script for your, for your, for your children, you don't have a perceptual code, what, how do you want my child to live? And then even as a parent, draft your own media plan for your children, then mm. you are in for a lot. Because no matter what you keep preaching, okay, so take for instance, I'm telling my child now, work hard, work hard, hard work pays. 
And then someone just comes and does a particular dance and all of a sudden that person has so much money. How am I going to convince my child that, that, hard, working, work that hard work pays? So all I need to do, I have to intentionally create a media plan for my children. Who are the, his or her role models? What is the future I see based on the unique qualities displayed by this child? So who can, who has been this child's forerunner? Who has done this before? How can I make this person in the space of my child if the person is around me? If the person is around, thank God for, for the internet. How can I, can I make this child study this man? Maybe every week we pick up people that have these traits. Apart from that, how can we also do it in a fun way? So it's not just yeah. boring, it's not rigid, we are not just, okay, my mommy, your thing is always boring, daddy, what is always stressing <laughs> us. You have to infuse play because one of the things we were meant to understand is that be serious, stay well, study hard. Why are you always playing? But we forget that play is one of the ways to even pass Educate messages. Educate you, you have to creatively, like the teenagers now. I even learned it because I had a point I was struggling to teach my children the Bible. And of course, you know how we grew up. They would say, use King James. Go it down, do it, not it, and all of that. And then you take that to a child that is just thinking that this is Shakespearean kind of English. What are you talking about? And you, you are not breaking it down. You're not yeah. infusing the learning. You're not making it as practical as possible. And you're complaining that your children are sleeping during devotion. You're complaining that I don't want to follow you for, for church programs. You have to be creative hmm. about the way you pass this. And you have to be way ahead of them. Now, you don't just wait to do emergency parenting. You don't just wait because, like, the, the saga that has gone you now say, hey, the world is crazy. Oh, let, us even, let rapture happen already. <laughs> that, is not, that is not the best approach. You have to be proactive. You should know that even as a child, remember, there were certain things you saw that never really made sense, but as you grew up, it started making sense. So yeah. you have to start early. And if you don't open up early to them, you don't... Connect to them early enough. You know, when they get big, they'll feel like daddy and mommy are too busy. Mm. And if they're not also talking to you, they're yeah. talking to someone else. Yes. And God help you if they're talking, if they're not talking to someone that is not. That's giving them that the right information. Wow. Yes. Okay. So um, one of the things you've raised is the fact that parents are not paying enough attention yeah. um, in terms of what their children are being exposed to, in terms of what their children are doing. And now uh, one of the issues, like the saga that is currently trending on the social media space uh, because of the child incident now one would wonder in this generation how how does a child who is yet to be 18 get access to an iPhone and how do parents get to allow such to happen in their very home front so as um, an expert in the field would, would you say parents are over pampering their children or would you say this is um, aware of, of parents not being too much in the lives of their children and on what effect this has done to the society I think um, um, for me, I think it's it's not just a straightforward answer. It could also be well. It could also be that oh, maybe this is the age of the internet, so everything is you know happening on the internet. And maybe your child now comes and says, "Oh, me, I want to do this. I want to do that." But you forget that even you as an adult, you are hand you are with a gadget. What fl what flips through? What slides through? What pops up? Sometimes you, you, if, you're, if you're careful enough, you can delete it, but sometimes the, the memories are there. Once mm. in a while, when your mind is hovering, it will settle on that. So it's not, it's not about giving them, it's not about them, the fact that this generation, we are doing a lot of, a lot of learnings on the internet, but it's, it's more like, what, are, what have you, in, in, what have you uh, what is the word, updated or installed, installed. in those gadgets yeah. to help you have control? And, you just feel that, oh, a child will be able to decipher, to pick, you know, something bad from what is good. No, you have to. Those, that, those gadgets, there are, are ways you can control those gadgets. You can also walk around, walk, have a media plan. What times do they have access to this? What sites are permitted on those gadgets? So you, you can't just do things and just feel, or you're just casual. Children are way smarter. So it's not bad for you to give them access, it's not good for you to, you know, it's not bad for you to say, oh, this is the internet age. But like you also said, the child you're giving that gadget to, have you taken time to school that child? What is that child actually doing on social media platforms? Mm. If you're telling me that, oh, my child is talented, I want to showcase my child's skills and talent, there are ways to go about it. Do you have a manager who, who, who knows exactly what are you putting out, what is the essence, 
Because if you do not do that, there's a tendency that the child may get distracted. There's a tendency that the child may consume what is not age appropriate. Yeah. So there, are, you have to have a social a media plan in your home. Even sometimes you just sit at home and you are you are um, logging. You said I've disconnected them. The kids will still have a way. A way to yeah. Or sometimes we even leave our modems on and then go to sleep. And you you forget that. And then you allow your children do not submit their gadgets before they go to bed and you go to sleep maybe one day you're tired and they now they now hinge or as in they now grab or grapple onto that and while you're sleeping a lot is going it's on right. some months i think about a year ago or two years no during the COVID, my, my mentor mentioned something i think there was a challenge that was going on and what the teenagers do at that time so they knew when their parents would go, to, go bed. to bed and they now took up a challenge where they would come i think sometime around 2 a.m until 4 a.m Install, you know, download either their nudes, whatever it is they're doing, and put it on their statuses. And the moment they know that their mothers or parents are going to wake up from five, they now they delete it. it down. So that was happening. Now, how did that happen when they do not have access to maybe internet. To, to internet? So it's good for you to have access. It's good to allow your kids, but regulate it. Let them know. For me, I would feel that a child should be a, a, an adult before they even have access to social media platforms. There are some, so, 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 some media platforms that are not even there. Because I can't, I need a lot of coordination as an to adult. be there as an adult. So how much more a child? a child? How much more a child? So even if you're letting that child there, have you schooled that child enough? Is that child confident? Can that child, does that, does that child know what is called delayed gratification? That, oh, okay, even if I don't have it now, I'll have it when it's important. Even if I get it now, there are certain sites that are permitted. There are some that are not permitted. So... What exactly have you told that child? You cannot, you, you, it's just like you, okay, it's just like you're just handing over the keys of your car to an eight year old or a 10 year old, yeah. and you're now saying, oh, he will never crash, he will never crash. No <laughs> proper training. What would that, what would that do? So that, yeah. just picture that also with the use of gadget. It is even more deadly because if care is not taken, that child may be damaged. And if there's no intervention on time, it will just keep the deteriorating child. like that. Okay, so. This, this is a lot of information that I really do hope more people can get to hear. But as an expert, are there families and parents that are opening up to the fact that we have professionals that are helping us, you know, navigate parenting? Um, they are aware. Sometimes, like, okay, like I'm talking now, someone would just say, oh, she's making sense. Oh, that is true. But after now, we st slide back to our, our, old, our old ways. Oh, and then when there is another... When there is another maybe a trending story, we mm. now come back. Mm. Now, parents, and, and one thing that people keep saying, oh, there is no book, there is no manual to parenting, we don't know it all. You know, it's, we, whereas there, 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 are, there are materials, there are groups. So for me, I, I just feel is what you pay, in, what is interesting to you, you'll find a way. What is important to you, you'll find a way. If your children are important, if you want to raise you know, responsible children or wholesome children, you would look around for who can help you do it. I keep saying that before now, we used to say it takes a village to raise a child. I'm changing the narrative right now. I'm saying that it takes an intentional, uh, it takes an enlightened or an informed village mm. to raise a responsible or wholesome child. So it's not just any kind. So when you hear that word enlightened or informed village, that means that the people that make up that village, they have to know what they are doing. Yeah. What kind of house helps do you have? What kind of domestic staff are in your present? What kind of um, what kind of um, schools do you enroll these children into? Do, 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 aside from the name, the glam, do their values align with your own values? What do would they give produce? Like you already have, like I talked about scripting. You have a script that everyone around you you must let them know. This is how yeah. I want to raise my kid. This is how I want to raise my kid. So if would the school help you? produce that child based on the scripting that you have wow. so it's a, it's an intentional thing you don't just it's not, it's not, it doesn't happen by wishful thinking that was a quick question i was going to bring to you just before we round up <laughs> okay. and and you've already gone there yeah. um aligning this pattern of um practice with our school systems because i also believe that our schools are to blame to if, to a very large extent the family has its fault like you said everybody has its fault yeah. now like the, the the current case this issue happened like a month ago the school found a way to hide it from the parents until it escalated now is there a way for us to align this knowledge that the family life practitioners have with the with the schools so in other words are we having family life practitioners try to pay attention are they rendering their services 
to schools. I think that's the summary of that English. We are rendering our services and it's one of the things we actually advocate that every school should at least have a counsellor. Not just a counsellor, not just like those, not, not just like the one that sits there and tells you what courses the students should be, but people that are trained to understand what are their what behavioural change are we expecting? A little bit of psychology. How early can we now infuse these learnings? What values are we going to you know, give, instill into the lives of the students? So it's, we have been advocating, we've been talking, but sometimes schools spend a lot of money bringing celebrities to do things that are outside the curriculum and they feel that we may be, oh, we cannot afford you until there's a crisis and we now go ahead to do um, damage control. Parenting is an 18-year curriculum. Mm. Now, from nine, age 19, your report card is before you. Now, it's even shorter because some people from age 10, you're already sending your children to boarding school. school. So you realize that it's, you even have like 10 years to do a lot of work and intermittently until they get to age That's the thing you subscribe to or not. You're not going to Send, board, sending your children to boarding school. For, it's, my kids are actually in boarding school. Okay. But before I took, made that decision, I did not just wake up in grade 4 or grade 5. It was something, I am a product of a, of a boarding school. And it had been one of the best experiences. I went to a unity school, one of the best experiences. So... I, it depends on, even if you want to send that child, how active, how proactive have you been? At that, yes, child. at that point, well, is that child, if you set that child into that, so would that child take decisions, would that child manage himself? There are a lot of skills that you have to teach. So I, 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 it's not, there's nothing bad about sending your child. And I wouldn't also say, okay, because I've said it, now everybody send your children. What have no, you put in, please? What have you put in? Yes, what's wow. your script? Wow. Ah, it's oh. been such a full conversation. If we try to ask her one more question, <laughs> we're going to have a lot of problems. But thank you so much. It's been really, really enlightening. And I hope that the parents, you know, following our show can implement some of these things. You know, a take home from the conversation is have a media plan for your family exactly. and your children and have a script of how you want your child to, to be you know, be raised. And when you have the script, anyone who comes to your anyone house in your space should be exposed exactly to, to that. To that. Wow, what, thank what, you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank what you what so words much. are permitted? Yeah. What language? How do you want? Because you can't say you want to raise a royalty and you're smacking the child at every slightest thing. You're mm. bombarding. So that's why I'm talking about scripting. If you want to raise a royalty, there's a way to raise Is a royalty. Is there a way we can have professional access to you know like you do you offer help with Ex scripting Ex yes of course i do okay. i do i do so mo i'm any, any of my colleagues yeah. i mean like we are we know how to intentionally script to give you what at uh, between what age to what age what should be done wow. in services that we offer wow thank you so much Ma, for coming on the show it's yeah. still rise and shine saturday and we are going to go for our very last break and when we return, we'll be bringing you the very last segment of this show. Do stay with us. Politics is a game. It is about delivering dividends of democracy. For this, accountability is key. So we listen, we follow up on the promise, and we track the progress. Watch Political Spectrum weekdays, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Exclusive to Spectrum TV. allowed by grossly Our governors have to share police powers with the president as 
stipulated by the constitution. We do not have a federal government police force. We have the Nigeria police force, which shall be administered, organized, and supervised by the Nigeria police force. No, my lord, I want to say something. Huh? I want to say something here. Perhaps it might also enlarge the scope of people who should be invited here for examination. My lord, if we cannot find those who literally murdered Abiola, who are those people who could be said to be the beneficiaries of the death of Abiola? Rogers has linked you with some of the killing city. He never did. He linked you with the attempted murder of Ibru. He did not. My lord, the matters council is leading the evidence in our matters. Is this an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord, but sir, you can't be talking about cases which are in court, Is my this lord. an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord. These cases are in court, my lord. I'm just reminding you a lot of My lord, my lord, sorry, my lord. I think I'll be in court again. Legally Speaking, a program that deals with legal issues and questions we face as citizens of this amazing country, Nigeria. Legally Speaking, join us every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. for Legally Speaking. Welcome back. It's still Rise and Shine. And at this point in time, we're about to bring you our artists of the week. So without much uh, talks for the first time here live at Spectrum Television, Oh yeah, join us, make welcome Sam Price, the Oracle, as the artist of the week. Woo! Welcome, 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 thank welcome. You, thank you, thank you. Okay, Sam so. Price, the Oracle, you're already a Sam of Price and then you're an Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's quickly start. Uh, how has it been for you? you? You've been in the music industry for quite a good number of years. Um, how's your journey been? Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, it's been wonderful. It's like you're a man of short words. <laughs> I, 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 it means I'm really going to enjoy my time with you. Okay, so on an average, how many years would you say that you've been into music? And has it always been gospel music? Uh, I don't know if I, if I may say I can't remember how many years because wow. I started music when I was quite For young. the longest time. And um, it wasn't all gospel okay. from the beginning. You know, I, I grew up. Grew up in Calabar, Calabar sound gone, right? <laughs> so and um, and I I started to play drum at the age of ten. So by the time I was fourteen, I was already playing in the club. Yes, like secular band. I played okay. with the band. Then Luna Club way back in Calabar, and the target of Bugubri Axis in Calabar. Okay. So, so I I've done the secular too. All right. So what what informed your transition into the gospel? Music uh, nothing. I grew up from a family, uh, I mean, a Christian home. My mom was a prophetess, my late mom, okay. with the African Apostolic. So, so I've been like that church boy, but at some point I wasn't, I wasn't having this, uh, you know, soul salvation. So my mom was a prophetess, but it, it, that didn't rub up on me. So, I, so at what point did the salvation come into uh, the picture <laughs> that you now became a gospel singer? Maybe change from your Maybe uh, change from, uh, from, uh, from music to the church. Mm. It was 2000, it was 2000 and um, my, then I was still a teenager, so my elder brother who was a drummer too, he, he now asked me to come over to Eket, you know, to come play for some church okay. in Eket and that's how I got the encounter, you know, Evangelism, by Evangelist Ben of Young World Outreach did a crusade at the Eket Sports Stadium. Okay. Which Omar by preached that day I attended. And that's how. And then happens. the spirit of the Lord <laughs> captured <laughs> 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 And then you changed. Okay, so, now, um, as, as the music uh, minister of, of the gospel, um, wh what is the central theme of your message? What, what is the message behind your music? Is, is there a, a central theme or you just do what the spirit inspires you? Um, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Well, I, I basically talk about life, uh, things that happen in life. I do not just do the conventional gospel music. You know, I talk about things. I talk about because in church, people are going through stuff and, and we don't talk about it. So I use my lyrics to talk about things, talk about Jesus. But the center, you know, the point, center point is about Jesus. So you'd say that with, with talking about life and the center spread being Jesus, Jesus yes. you, you're, you're trying to offer people hope with your songs. Yeah. 
That's a beautiful one. So do you have any albums and any any uh, um, EPs to your name? Uh, I don't have an album in quotes, but I have I've done few singles. Okay. And um, and yet to do the EP album. Okay. But I think I've released uh, approximately seven singles. Beautiful. Yeah. So, but then how do you say that the Akwaibo uh, music space, because you're currently in Akwaibo, and I know that you travel a little bit to do music ministry. How would you say that the music climb in Akwaibo has been for you as an artist? Yeah, I studied in Eket and it was a wonderful time. I lived in Eket for like 16 years or thereabout, and I moved to the east. I was in Enugu, and I'm just coming back to stay in Akwaibo, the capital city now. So uh, I think uh, the Akwaibo music space is wonderful. But unfortunately, um, we don't have the capacity, the market, okay. Okay, to, to go that far. And Within and Akwaibo? Think, yes, and I think the language barrier too. It, um, yeah, you do, if you do the local dialect, it's only going to sell within our space. Okay. Uh, Kwaibom, Crossover, Calabar, and but if you go really up, it's only maybe a who are outside here that may enjoy uh, that it. That may enjoy it, but it wouldn't cut across. So the wisdom is you try to cut mix. You know, you do the Aquabom cut mix it, you know, with English. English and so okay. that other persons can Impressive. So I'm going to ask you a quick question just before we round off. Now, as a music person, money, money and influence, how are you managing it? Because sometimes um, people might think because you're in the music industry or oh, they see your face on billboards, people might think you have money. Besides music, are you doing any other thing for money? And do you always have to place a, 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 a price tag on your music? Say people invite you to play to come sing, do you have to place a price tag? before you honor these invitations? Well, talent is business. Oh. Uh, business is talent. <laughs> I, I don't place a price tag though, but I, I understand that uh, the Bible says that the giftings of God was for us to profit therein. Mm. So if you have the giftings and you don't make money, um, that, that is a negation of God's So problem. it is legal by the word for you to profit by <laughs> so, it. So I like this. I like so, this particular one. So I don't have a price tag, but I, I'll let you know that you have to not pay. I don't use the word pay because nobody can really mm. pay me for my worth. So, so it's it, it un only unfortunate that most or some people do not really know how to appreciate talent. You know, while they know that said something to me and Nathaniel Bassi, when I recorded with him, he said, I don't have a price tag, but a reasonable person should know what to give to me. What wow. I want. So, wow, thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. We, we have really enjoyed our short time with you. We hope that as your music increases and you, you know, get more around the world, we will always have you back here to interview you. Thank you. Thank you. We hope to enjoy more of your music. Thank so, you. That's Any, where we're going to draw the curtains. Yes, we have and to draw the No curtains. last word. Just enjoy your weekend yeah. and have fun. Yes, thank you so much for being a part of Rise and Shine Saturday today. It's been an interesting, interesting show. Please do something for us this weekend. Drop, this, drop a script for your children. Drop a media plan for your children so that you can track what your children are taking in. Thank you very much for being a part of Rise and Shine. Thank you to everybody who made this possible today. And from all of us here for today, it's bye-bye. Do enjoy the rest of your weekend. Yeah.